Even though Jones never mentioned their name and the parents never sought a retraction, Alex Jones is being sued for defamation and intentional infliction of emotional distress by parents of children who were murdered at Sandy Hook Elementary School. The rest of the plaintiffs are federal agents and the legal team is comprised of highly politicized members of the anti-gun lobby who have admitted their intention is to silence Alex Jones. So with this new precedent, if you dare question the official narrative, then someone can sue you into oblivion for emotional distress. The plaintiffs claim that Alex Jones was the perpetrator of the Sandy Hook crisis actor conspiracy theory, which is demonstrably false. After all the censorship and deleted videos, one can still find hours and hours of video content compiled from hundreds of sources, all questioning the official narrative of Sandy Hook. It was arguably the most discussed conspiracy theory since 9-11. And over the course of seven years, Alex Jones spent less than 30 minutes discussing it. We know this because it's all part of the public record, but these radical judges do not care about evidence. I am not currently representing Alex Jones, so I am free to speak my mind. Uh, Jones has produced more discovery than anybody. I can't find anyone that's produced more discovery than he is, and yet they pretended that he didn't. Why? Because they built their whole case on a big lie. Both Judge Gamble in Texas and Judge Bellis in Connecticut have found Alex Jones guilty without ever holding a trial or hearing any evidence, which is worse treatment than anyone has ever gotten in America, including Charles Manson and Al Capone. And their excuse for this abomination of justice is they claim that Jones failed to provide them with the incriminating evidence that they imagine must exist. Whatever that mysterious, unspecified evidence is, both judges have stripped Jones of his First Amendment right, but Judge Gamble has gone much further. In the Alex Jones case, Judge Gamble has ordered that the words First Amendment and free speech cannot be used by Alex Jones, his witnesses, or even his lawyers. He is not allowed to defend himself. Judge Gamble has instructed that the jury is not allowed to hear about the emotional trauma caused by the mass murderer who killed the children. They are only allowed to hear how their trauma was caused by the words of Alex Jones. And during jury selection, not a single juror thought the media has ever treated Alex Jones or Infowars unfairly. And any juror who questioned the $100 million amount casually discussed by the plaintiff's lawyers were kicked off the jury. Alex Jones was canceled from social media in 2018 and is now being canceled from the US Bill of Rights and Constitution. And because of our complacency, everyone else is next. And in case you were wondering, the way we used to do justice was a thing called innocent until proven guilty. It relied upon the burden of proof, and it was pretty good. Welcome, my friends, to this live Thursday, July 28th, 2022 transmission. I'm your host, Alex Jones. So believe it or not, what you just saw actually aired during the day of trial we're about to watch. Which reminds me, I labeled the first day of trial incorrectly as the 29th of July. It turns out it was actually on the 26th. Apologies for that. The third day starts off with more rejections of evidence for the defense before bringing out the jury. These guys have no chance at all. Um, so I reviewed defendants proposed exhibit four and five, and I am going to sustain the objections um, for <clears throat> various parts of them, all of the different objections, so without getting into more details about that. So they are not admitted. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Good morning. You may all be seated. Right, we're going to pick up Since Jones's defense attorney really has no ability to make an argument, he spends the next few hours asking Daria questions that give the jury a crash course lesson on all the world's conspiracy theories, which of course isn't going to help here in any way. He also played some videos, 
The plaintiffs demanded that he play the entire hour-long videos instead of cherry-picking clips, you know, like the plaintiffs did. Little Mark even argued for the defense to force the jury to sit through all the commercials. Could it fast forward plus a commercial break here? Your Honor, I don't, we're putting the whole video into evidence. That's what we're doing. There was an agreement. No clips have ever been designated. If he wants to play, to play the whole 50 minutes. But luckily, since the judge hates listening to Jones so much, she allowed them to be skipped. We can have a further discussion later if we need to. I'm, I'm fine. You can skip it for now. It's going back to the jury, so they can watch it if they want to. The only interesting things that came of it were these goofy CNN clips. Yeah. I'm starting to get real bothered by all this. But after all of that, he played this video from 2017, well before any of the Sandy Hook cases had been filed against Jones. I woke up this morning on Father's Day, and I was holding my young infant daughter in my arms, looking into her eyes, sitting out on the back porch, hearing the birds sing, and it just brought tears to my eyes, thinking about all the parents that have lost their children on Father's Day or Mother's Day, who have to then think about that. Parents should never have to bury their own children. And that's why on Father's Day, I want to reach out to the parents of the slain children at the horrible tragedy in Newtown, Connecticut, and give you my sincere condolences. I'd also like to reach out to any of the parents who lost a child in Newtown uh, to invite them to contact me to open a dialogue, because I think it's really essential we do that uh, instead of letting the MSM misrepresent things and really uh, try to drive this nation uh, apart. Right now is a time for unity and peace in our country, I think, now more than ever. But you should listen to this next question very carefully because she's not going to get to answer it. Do you think, uh, as corporate representative and um, as an employee of InfoWars who's been there for the last seven years that Alex Jones made money or lost money by covering his questions about Sandy Hook? Your Honor, I'm just, that, that, that not only violates my health, but it's irrelevant. There's no foundation of yeah. So, can you press for just a minute? And of course, the audio gets cut, so we can't hear. But I can tell you that the plaintiff's case hinges on Jones making shit tons of cash off the Sandy Hook tragedy. The truth is, he lost money when he reported on it. And the default ruling, from what I have found so far, is mostly based on the fact that Jones 
never turned in any promotional materials relating to Sandy Hook. But that is because no such promotional materials exist. That's the big violation. It's a big load of malarkey. You can tell by the shit-eating grin on little Mark's hideous face. Just look at that little ginger-bearded boy. From here they play the Megyn Kelly interview, which I can't even show you for copyright reasons. So I'm skipping the rest of this tedium and cutting straight to the jury questions. All right, Ms. Karpova, um, what's going to happen now is I'm going to ask you some questions and you're going to answer them. And I'm going to instruct you to please carefully listen to the question and answer only the question and nothing else. Do you understand? Yes. Great. So it's going to be pretty rapid fire, just question, answer, question, answer. For my jury, remember, if you don't hear your question or one of your questions or part of your question, that's because I made a decision that it wasn't um, appropriate for some reason. Sure. Do you search for true evidence before Mr. Jones starts his topics on the show? Alex talks about the uh, whatever articles that he's being presented with. What companies are part of free speech systems? No company. Free speech systems. What is the average annual revenue of the free of free speech systems from 2014 to 2016? I don't have that information right now. What does Sandy Hook vampires exposed mean? Is this referring <coughs> to actual vampires or is this metaphorical? It is definitely metaphorical. It's meant to um, compare those who exploit the tragedy to somebody who would um, feast on your blood. Who are the globalists? The globalists are people who have a worldwide agenda that they want every country to follow and have control over um, without there being sovereign nations that can determine their own future. What is Fast and Furious? Fast and Furious was a uh, drug running operation in South America. Why did Rob do leave InfoWars? As far as I know, he wanted to move on. To your knowledge, has Alex ever mentioned the plaintiff's names on air? Not that I recall. What other revenue streams besides the InfoWars store did InfoWars have during the 2015 to 2018 period? I don't know of any other revenue. How much revenue did InfoWars generate as of December 31st, 2021? I don't have a, that breakdown in front of me right now. How much revenue did InfoWars generate um, as of the most recent quarter end of 2022? Don't have that information. Who vets or qualifies guests prior to their appearance? Producer. Do you think the company has a responsibility to vet guests? To an extent of our ability. <coughs> How many radio listeners on average listen to the show? It's hard to say. How many viewers of the show view it on the website? The show has a wide reach, um, millions. How many uh, listeners are on shortwave radio? Don't have those statistics right now. How, on how many unique broadcasts or stories was Wolfgang Howard <coughs> featured or interviewed on any Alex Jones related medium specific to Sandy Hook? The number was calculated to be a fraction of a half a percent of the entirety of the entirety Ms. of the Ms. Karpova, let me read the question so you can answer the question you were asked. On how many unique broadcasts or stories was Wolfgang Halbig featured or interviewed on any Alex Jones related medium? specific to Sandy Hook? Less than half a percentage. That is not a number. Do you not know the answer? You may say, I do not know. I do not know the number. On how many unique broadcasts or stories was Wolfgang Halbig featured or interviewed on any Alex Jones related medium on any other topic? Zero. What is the total number of known unique videos and articles? I'm going to read that again so you can listen carefully. 
What is the total number of known unique videos and articles related to Sandy Hook on any Alex Jones related medium? I don't know the number. Would you say that Alex is being his true self when he responds to the news on his show? Or do you think he is adopting a personality like an actor or influencer might? 100% his true self. Under oath, in whatever capacity as a witness you choose to answer, is it your opinion that InfoWars is a trustworthy news organization dedicated to investigative journalism or an infotainment organization that only purports to be a news organization in the pursuit of making money and purposely focuses on unsubstantiated and unprovable claims of a fantastical nature in order to tantalize its viewers? Neither. If neither are valid representations, in your opinion, then will you say under oath that InfoWars is not a trustworthy source for news? I would not say that. While working at InfoWars, has Alex Jones ever knowingly presented false information? No. How many employees were with Alex Jones InfoWars when you joined in 2015? Between 50 and 80. And how many are there now? Roughly about the same. How would you compare the anguish suffered by Alex Jones from people accusing him of lies or killing the Sandy Hook children to the anguish suffered by the parents from Alex Jones claims that the Sandy Hook shootings never happened or that the parents were staged actors? And it's hard to compare those two. Do you believe that this whole trial is somehow a staged event, asking you as a person and also as the corporate representative? To a large extent, yes. Thank you. Ms. Karpova, you may step down. May this witness be released from the rule and any subpoena if there is one. Yes, yes Your Honor, should be released from the subpoena and the rule. Thank you. Do you also agree to release her? Thank you. All right, Ms. Karpova, you are free to go about your business. Thank you so much for your time and testimony. My name is Owen Troyer. I work for InfoWars. I'm 33 years old. Uh, Alex Jones is the sole owner of Free Speech Systems LLC, correct? Yes, I believe so, yes. Um, InfoWars.com is obviously on the internet, right? Correct. If somebody said that InfoWars lost all access to the internet, that would be an incorrect statement. Fair? Yes. Um, InfoWars is on, it, it, on right now, right? And we can pull it up and there's, there's a video. Somebody's probably on live right now, right? Yes. Your Honor, I'd like to pull up InfoWars and put it on live. This is for demonstrative. Okay. I'm pulling he up wants to Info show InfoWars on, Info on mute. And you're, this is a direct connection to the internet, I take it? It is. Okay. So this is, and I'm going to walk over. This is InfoWars.com, the, the, the home page. It's active, it's up, it's live, it has been since. <coughs> As far as you work, long as you work for a company, right? I'm sorry, I was distracted looking at the screen. Can you repeat that? Yeah, my fault. It has been active and live for as long as you've been working for the company, right? Infowars.com? Yes. Okay. And you create content. If you click on <coughs> band, band video, this is the content that's created and uploaded to band.com every day, correct? Uh, yes, band.video. Band up video. It's hard to see, but if, if, at least if we'll scroll down just a little bit, you can see how long, obviously the names, how long they are, and when they were uploaded. That's good. So I know the jury can't see this, so I'm just going to say it out loud. Up here is 17 minutes and change, uh, uploaded an hour ago. Uh, 13 minutes and some change, uploaded two hours ago. Eight minutes and change, uploaded an hour ago, two hours ago, hour ago so forth. So and you guys make a lot of content every single day, right? Yes. Half since you've been there, right? Yes. There's not been any um, limitation to your ability to make videos and put them on InfoWars.com, correct? Uh, no, other than tech issues on our end. During the broadcasts, sometimes there will be breaks to promote different items, right? Different things that you sell in your store, correct? 
Yeah, we have breaks where we run commercials that feature our products. Sometimes it's just live kind of as you're going. Uh, Mr. Jones will just say, also buy this pill or supplement or whatever it may be, right? Sure, that's referred to as a live read. Okay. It, I've heard it said that about a third of the content, the third of the show, is some form of advertisement for supplements or whatever it is you guys sell. Does that seem about right to you? No. You think it's less? Yeah. 25%? Probably less. Okay. I'm in the ballpark. I, I really, I mean, that's, you're getting into math, but if I was, I'd say it's probably maybe 10, 15 percent for the most. Okay. Um, how long have you been hosting shows live on m The show that I host is called The War Room. That launched in September mm -hmm. of 2017. I would fill in as a guest host on other InfoWars live shows previously to that, but that was not a regular thing. You co-host with Mr. Jones often, correct? Uh, I've been a guest on Alex's show, yes. You would call it a guest whenever, let's take, for example, Tuesday afternoon, while we were here in court, you and Mr. Jones were live for three hours, right? Um, I, I don't remember the exact amount of time. Aren't your segments three hours? No, the segments are about ten minutes. You were live for three hours, and that's uploaded to bandvideo.com, right? Which day are we speaking? We're talking about Tuesday, which was the 26th. Alex Jones on air when he's supposed to be in court, and they're going to be fools because I'm going to be in court. We're taping it Monday night, dumbasses. <laughs> I just, I, they're so dumb. They're going to watch the start of the show where I'm in studio. They'll already have articles everywhere before they even figure out I taped this. Pretty much every day... Well, since this trial started on, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and, and even this morning, Alex Jones has been on live broadcast, right? I'm not sure. Which day are you not sure about? Um, yesterday. Uh, Let me show you what I marked as plaintiff. Let me show you what I marked as plaintiff's 126. This is a screenshot from a show that Mr. Jones was on yesterday, correct? You can see the date, 727? Yes. Uh, we'll move 126 and Any objection? Yes, Your Honor. Relevance and also when this show was taped. When this show is taped is not an objection. So okay. relevance. Foundation. Overruled. And um, 126 is admitted. Just putting it up to point out that uh, Mr. Jones was on the show yesterday uh, when he went in court. Did you know when he stormed out of court today, he went and was on the show again today? Um, no, I was not watching. Okay. We could probably pull it up on the band video and see, but we can take my word for it that he was live today. Sure. In fact, he was with Mr. Barnes, who I think I saw in the courtroom. But Barnes, first off, you've been watching this trial that kicked off Monday. They call it trial. They're trying to hide from the media. The media works with them. They're trying to hide from the jurors that a judge found me guilty not a jury of my peers. She calls it a special case. She's been trying to block anything coming in, even stuff that was put in to discover years ago, things that was put in weeks ago as evidence. She's now playing dumb and saying we can't put in clips where I said Sandy Cook happened nine, ten years ago. Yeah, Mr. Barnes back there, the, his, his former attorney, right? No doubt. I mean, it's a complete joke of a uh, of justice in Texas and in America. Because what's happened, you've already had a complete denial of due process of law, your right to bring motions to dismiss, your right to bring motions for summary judgment, your right to bring slap motions, your right to bring appeals of those motions, uh, and any denial thereof. And then you've been denied the right to trial by jury on the substantive merits of the case. And now you're being systematically denied your right to present any evidence concerning your own case about the very limited issues she's allowing the jury here. While she's allowing the jury to hear a bunch of inflammatory evidence that has nothing at all to do with the case, because the judge has said, we're only here for damages. Well, if we're only here for damages, then 90% of the evidence that's come in shouldn't have come in on behalf of the plaintiffs. But to the degree she's going to allow that evidence, there's something called the rule of completeness. What, what does that mean for those uh, folks out there? Rule 106 in the Federal Rules of Evidence. It means you can't take one excerpt out of a statement, out of a letter, out of a comment, out of an uh, article, out of a broadcast, and exclude the context in which that comment is made. And here, their entire premise of the case is that Alex Jones is solely and wholly responsible for all of the pain ever suffered by anybody connected to Sandy Hook. The exculpatory evidence proves that's utterly false, completely false. 
proves that uh, InfoWars and Alex Jones covered every aspect of this case, that 99.9% of what they covered said Sandy Hook happened. And in fact, there isn't evidence that the individual suffered injury from these words, as is revealed in the fact they never sought retractions, corrections, or apologies at the time. But the, you apologize even before that. And yet here, they're not allowing any of that evidence in. Why? I, I can't see Mr. Barnes. Uh, you maybe he's right behind the camera. <clears throat> It's the whole reason why the court and the plaintiffs begged for a default in the first place, because the evidence they claimed exists just doesn't exist because their theory of the whole case was always wrong. That's how it started in Connecticut first with a sanction was they said, give us your Sandy Hook marketing. We didn't. We hardly ever covered it. We don't have like a news article. We don't have marketing with an article. If I cover monkeypox, there's not like a meeting about marketing with it. News is one thing. Products that we think are popular and work well are another. Oh, for and it's too, but, but the judge said, no, I'm sanctioning you. You have it. Uh, and then that started the whole thing going. I'll have to take your word for it. She's a perfect blockade. Yeah, he's right there. Or he, sorry. Excuse me, don't want this gender. Did you know that one of the first things this jury was told was Mr. Jones won't be at this trial very much because of a medical condition? I'm unaware. Truth is, he's not at the trial much because he's on air selling pills, right? I'm not, I, I'm not sure. That's where he is when he's not here. I mean, we just established that, right? Today? Well, I know you don't know he was here today. Let's talk about Tuesday and Wednesday, okay? Okay. When he wasn't in trial, he was on air saying whatever he's saying and trying to sell pills or supplements or whatever products you guys have, correct? I'm trying to recall correctly. I believe Monday, I don't know if he was on air Monday, and I think... Tuesday, he may have had pre-recorded segments that we aired. Um, Mr. That's Sorry, my best recollection of Monday and Tuesday. <laughs> if the show on Tuesday <coughs> happened, happened in court on Tuesday, it wasn't pre-recorded, right? Uh, okay, yes. Okay. You, you, you hosted with him. Is, can you put up 124? I mean, Mr. Shorter, you lived this, right? That's you sitting right next to Alex Jones on 124, mm -hmm. right? Yes. You know when you did it. Did you do it Tuesday? Uh, I, I guess that was Tuesday. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, it's all been a blur when I'm on seven hours a day, and then I'm sitting in the courthouse for seven hours, eight hours. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just kind of a blur. Do you consider yourself a journalist? Sometimes. That's an interesting answer. Can you give me a little bit of an explanation? Sure. When I go to cover a live event at the scene, I've covered sporting events. I've covered, covered weather events, political events. I would consider that journalism when I'm live on the scene doing something. But when I'm hosting a talk show, not necessarily a journalist. Okay. What's like saying whenever I go home and go to bed, I'm not a lawyer. I'm still a lawyer, right? But you consider yourself a journalist by trade? Sometimes. Would you agree with me that it is not right for a journalist to edit video clips to fit an agenda? Yeah, that would be bad. Okay. It is not good practice for a journalist to take an edited video clip, not ask any questions about it, not do any fact checking, and air it. Agree with that? Yes. Because when you do that, mistakes are made, right? Yes. And when mistakes are made, people get hurt, right? Sometimes. Sometimes, right? That damage can be serious, right? Sometimes. Life changing, right? Sometimes. Devastating. Right? Sometimes. Right. You did a show on June 25th, 2017, where you were the sole host. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. Um, that was a Sunday, correct? Yes. Which is why you were doing it at the time, right? I'm sorry, what? Is that, that's why you were hosting, because it was a Sunday? Um, no. The Sunday Alex Jones show has been on air for a long time. I was filling in that night. Okay. It airs from 4 to 6 Central Time? Yes. This is the one where you challenge whether or not Neil Heslin ever held his son, Jesse, right? No, I uh, challenge that the videos presented didn't add up and that Megyn Kelly had done harm to the story being uh, removed from the public consciousness and just caused it to be brought up again. I'm not going to quibble about you because we're going to watch it. It is the show about Neil Heslin and whether or not he held Jesse in his arms, right? And that's what the show's about, or that segment's about. 
Um, not the whole at show. Least the last yeah. four minutes, yeah. It was the last four minutes? I believe so, yes. Of the, of the four to six? Yes. Okay. That show was on InfoWars, correct? Yes. So Free Speech Systems is the one that's publishing that, correct? Yes. Before you did that show, you had no idea who Neil Hesley was, right? Correct. You were handed the story while you were on air live. You ran with it, right? Yes. You did zero to determine if it was accurate, right? Correct. You did no vetting of the story at all, correct? Correct. You did nothing to determine if it was a joke or a parody, right? Correct. There are video clips in it. You didn't watch them, right? Correct. You didn't check the source, right? Well, I mean, I, I saw it said zero hedge on it. Okay, that's the website, right? Yes. That's not where it originated from, though, right? Well, it was published on Zero Hedge. That's where I saw it. But obviously, I understand the author was, I believe, something called Zero Point Now. Right. You think it's his real name? I doubt it. Right. So somebody called Zero Point Now writes something on a website called iBankCoin, which is then picked up by Zero Hedge. You do absolutely nothing to determine if any words in this have any accuracy at all, and you play it on air and make comments about it, right? Yes. So folks, now here's another story. You know, I don't even know if Alex knows about this, to be honest with you. Alex, if you're listening and you want to, uh, or if you just want to know what's going on, Zero Hedge has just published a story. Megyn Kelly fails to fact check Sandy Hook's Sandy Hook father's contradictory claim in Alex Jones' hit piece. Now, again, this this broke. I think it broke today. I don't know what time, but featured in Megyn Kelly's expose, Neil Heslin. A father of one of the victims during the interview described what happened the day of the shooting and basically what he said, the statement he made, fact checkers on this have said cannot be accurate. He's claiming that he held his son and saw the bullet hole in his head. That is his claim. Now according to a timeline of events and a coroner's testimony, that is not possible. And so one must look at Megyn Kelly and say, Megyn, I think it's time for you to explain this contradiction in the narrative. Because this is only going to fuel the conspiracy theory that you're trying to put out, in fact. So, and here's the thing, too. You would remember, let me see how long these clips are. You would remember if you held your dead kid in, in your hands with a bullet hole. That's not something that you would just misspeak on. So let's roll the clip first. Neil Heslin telling Megyn Kelly of his experience with his, with, uh, with his kid. At Sandy. Okay, so making a pretty extreme cl claim that would be a very thing vivid in your memory, holding his dead child. Now here is an account from the coroner that does not cooperate with that narrative. Uh, we did not bring the bodies and the families into contact. We took uh, pictures of them, um, of, of their facial features. You have, uh, uh, it's, it's easier on the families when you do that. Uh, there is uh, a time and a place for up close and personal in the grieving process. But to accomplish this, uh, we felt it would be best uh, to do it this way. And, uh, sort of, uh, you can control the situation uh, depending on your photographer. I have very good photographers, uh, but uh, it's got to be hard not to have been able to actually see her. Well, at first I thought that and I had questioned maybe wanting to see her. Okay, so just 
another question that people are now going to be asking about Sandy Hook. The conspiracy theorists on the internet out there that have a lot of questions that are yet to get answered. I mean, you can say whatever you want about the event. That's just a fact. So there's another one. Will there be a clarification from Heslin or Megyn Kelly? I wouldn't hold your breath. <laughs> so now they're fueling the conspiracy theory claims. Unbelievable. We'll be right back with more. Did InfoWars cut those clips? I do not know. So editors of InfoWars, as far as you know, could have been the one who cut those clips. You know they were cut, right? It's my understanding that they were cut by whoever published the story. You know they were cut, right? Well, yeah, the video clips. Yeah. You know this, the, the interview, and we're going to get to it, with, with Dr. Carver, the medical examiner? That's 15 and a half minutes long, right? I, I don't know that. You know it's a lot longer than what was showed on that story, right? Yes. Okay. You know the, um, the, the family, the, the McDonald family, they lost their daughter Grace. Do you understand that? Okay. Do you believe that? Do I believe what? That they lost their daughter Grace. Yes. Okay. You, you know that that was a long interview with Anderson Cooper, right? Again, I was not familiar with the interview prior. Do you, sitting on this seat right now, know that that interview with um, Anderson Cooper was significantly longer than what was played? I will take your word for it. Do you know that her answer, this McDonald's answer, is actually cut off in mid answer? There's a lot more to that answer that explains what she's saying. No. Did you know that what she's saying is she didn't want to open the casket at the funeral home to bring all the toys that she brought for Grace to put them in there because she wanted to remember the way she looked when she went to school that day? You know that? No, I'm not aware. Because you didn't do anything to find out, right? You may not have even actually read the article before you put it up, right? Start just kind of reading as you're going. I don't recall for sure, but yeah, could be the case. You've never heard of I Bank Coin, right? Yes. And you've never heard of the author Zero Point Now, correct? Yes. Despite that, you have no problem putting that on the air, right? Yes. You don't believe you called Bill Hessen a liar, right? Yes. That piece and what you say in it is, is Neil Hessen did not hold his son, right? I don't believe I said that. That's what the message is. Let's take the full message, whether it come from the article, the clips, or you. The message is Neil Heslin never held Jesse, right? No. The message is that the intention of Megyn Kelly to bury these conspiracy theorists failed miserably, and it's going to make it worse. So you're, we know this, right? This is this we can agree on. Alex Jones was angry at Megyn Kelly for that piece that ran, right, on him? I don't know. I, I'm sure. It, I'm sure that Alex Jones was unhappy that he was lied to by Megyn Kelly. He was. He was pissed. I mean, yeah, he was lied to. Right. So he wanted to get retaliation to Megyn Kelly, right? No. If he had to stomp on Neil Heslin on the way to do it, so be it. Right. That's what happened. No. What you had to try to say, because what you're what you're not saying is that Neil Heslin lost his son and he just didn't hold him. That that's a lie. What you're saying is. He's a crisis actor who forgot his lines. That's never, what you're saying. I never said that. That's the message. No, it's not. Because to, to say it's a hoax, to say it's a hoax, you have to say all these people are actors. And when you find a glitch in the matrix, when somebody says something just a little bit wrong that you think is out of character, out of line, they forgot their lines, that's the attack. That he's an actor, right? No, I never said he was an actor. I never said it was a hoax. So those are two parts that are spliced together. But the point is, both times you say he's claiming, right? Yes. Right. So that's like a you're saying it. Maybe it happened. Maybe it didn't. He's, he's that's his claim. Not that it happened. But he's claiming it happened, right? Well, yeah, that's what he claimed. I'm not doubting that. I never said that. So he was a liar. You're saying that playing the coroner's clip, saying that the parents and the children are never united, and also playing a mother's interview where she says she did not get to see her daughter Grace. Right after you say he claims to help Jesse, you don't say that that's evidence that he's not being truthful? No. And what was in my head that day was never that. The only thing that was in my head that day was questioning Megyn Kelly because she lied to Alex about what she was doing there. And then here, the conspiracy theory that she was trying to bury is rearing its ugly head again. I could have done a much better job that day. Absolutely. I probably should have known more about those videos and that story before I ran it. But I never called Mr. Heslin a liar. 
I never said Sandy Hook didn't happen. I never said that they were crisis actors. Next response to the ground. Sustain. You just said it was. You just said it was to get back at Megyn Kelly because she lied to Alex Jones. That's what you just said, right? Okay. That's what this was about. Is to get back at Megyn Kelly, and if you stomp on some people on the way, who cares? You didn't even know who it was, right? I wasn't trying to stomp on anybody. It's not a matter of what you're trying to do. It's the result that matters, right? Well, when do we begin? What's the result of what? You say you misspoke. No, I said you wouldn't misspeak. So what you're saying is, is Neil Hessel was telling the truth the whole time. That, that's your position. Now? That, that's what this. That's what this whole piece. From start to finish, the message anybody should get is that Neil Heston is telling the truth. I am taking a neutral <laughs> approach to this, and I'm simply saying that is a serious memory in your head that you would not forget. And then you challenge that it ever happened. Because you say the parents weren't allowed to see their kids, right? You put on evidence that the parents weren't allowed to see the kids, right? I played a clip of the coroner saying that the kids weren't released or that the bodies weren't released, so just as easily you can infer that the coroner was lying. And then you played a family, a grieving mother, who said that she wanted to see her child and decided not to, right? Yes, that clip followed. And you cut it off whenever you could explain what it was actually talking about, right? Uh, I did not edit that clip. Somebody did, you played it. Uh, yes. You don't know who edited it, right? I mean, no. Could have been somebody free speech, could have been somebody else. I don't know. Okay. So, Infowars, somebody, your folks in the back, I don't know what you call them, writers or editors or whatever it may be, had hours to try to fact check this before they handed it to you, right? Not necessarily. They might not have seen it until 5.35. Okay. Then they had 20 minutes. They might not have seen it until 5.55. All right. You think they just printed it as hot off the presses and threw it to you? Most likely, yes. Okay. We saw with Ms. Karpova earlier today that uh, the defense played a clip of Alex Jones saying that he gives his sincere condolences to the family. Are you familiar with that clip? I have heard Alex Jones apologize and, and basically correct himself many times. Let, yes. Let's be clear, that was not an apology. An apology is, I'm sorry for what I did. Sincere condolences is not an apology. It's something. But it's not an apology, right? If I said, I'm sorry for your loss, I'm not apologizing to you. Fair? That sounds like an apology to me. If you lost a loved one, and I came over and I said, Mr. Schroyer, I'm really sorry for your loss. That's not an apology. I would say it is. What am I apologizing for? If, if, if your loved one died and I said, Mr. Schroyer, I'm sorry for your loss, what am I apologizing for? You were sympathetic that I'm grieving. You see at the bottom of page two of the story, it says Jim Fetzer, professor emeritus at the University of Minnesota, who wrote a book claiming Sandy Hook was staged, and it goes on to kind of skew whatever that is. That's the fact checker, right? Uh, that's most likely what I was referring to, yes. Okay. fired from Minnesota for his stuff on Sandy Hook. Do you know that? Um, I did not know that at the time. Um, I do understand that he no longer is employed at that university. The book, Sandy Hook, what this, I'm sorry, his book's not called Sandy Hook with Stage, it's called Nobody Died in Sandy Hook. You, you know that, right? No, I'm unfamiliar. Was it on, wasn't it on the InfoWars website as a PDF? I'm not sure. Okay. You blow the whole email if you could. You know who Paul Watson is, right? Yes. Remember what his title was in 2015 or 2016? What do you mean by title? What was his job? He worked for InfoWars. What was, he, what was his job? I believe he was the editor-in-chief. Okay. Let's see what he says in an email on December 17, 2015, so about six months before you run that story. I'm going to read this along and see if I read it right. This Sandy Hook stuff is killing us. It's promoted by the most batshit crazy people like Ritz and Fetzer, who all hate us anyway. Plus, it makes us look really bad to a line of people who harass the parents of dead kids. It's going to hurt us with drudge and bringing bigger names into the show. 
plus the event happened three years ago. Why even risk our reputation for it? I read that right? Yes. And you see up top there it said, send this to Alex, right? Yes. You understand that to mean this is the message he sent to Alex, and he's now sending to Buckley, uh, Anthony, and Anthony at InfoWars, right? Yes. Six months before you ran your story, InfoWars knew that Fetzer was not a well man, right? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Six months before you ran your story, who the fact checker in the story was Fetzer, six months before you did that, InfoWars knew that he was not a well man. Right? Your Honor. <clears throat> oh, I looked at it wrong. My bad. So, I'm sorry. Uh, a year and a half. My, my fault. Not six months. A year and a half before. A year and a half before you ran your story. <coughs> InfoWars knew that Fetzer was not well. Right? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, clearly, via this email, Paul Joseph Watson did not trust Fetzer and called him batshit crazy. And there was a there was an email that went out that said stop this let's stop with this animal stuff right yes but you did right I never saw this email I didn't say you saw this email you clearly saw the one that said stop with the animal stuff right no I just told you I've never seen this email not this email was there a message email smoke signal memo whatever it may be that said stop it at Infowars with the animal stuff uh, I believe those memos may have gone around I don't exactly recall though. That didn't happen, though. There was more videos, and then there was yours. It's 2017, right? Yes. You never listened to the whole video, the whole interview with Dr. Carver, right? I don't believe so. In your piece, there was a part edited out of what? Maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds? Something around there, yes. That was available, right? You could have went and found that video, figured out what, what was being discussed, right? At when do you mean? When you heard it. No. You don't think that video is available when you aired it? Well, available. It might have been available, but I'm saying I never had access to it, and I had four minutes left until break, and that was all the videos I had. Four minutes left until the, <coughs> the ion, metal ion, whatever pills. Yeah, the break. Right. You testified that that this was available. It was on. It was. You could have found it if you went looking for it. Right. You're not disputing that. The full um, interview with the coroner was available. Okay. You're agreeing with me, right? Well, again, I, I don't know that, but I'm, tra I'm taking your word for it. Okay. Your whole story. This whole story is wrong because you didn't know the clip from the interview with the coroner was edited. That's fair, right? Yeah, the zero head story, I had that clipped out. Let me ask you that question again, and I'm not responsible. Sustain. The whole story you ran, the free speech system put out on the air to however many people would watch it, and then probably loaded it up somewhere. That whole story was wrong because you did not know the clip from the interview of the coroner was edited, right? Yeah, I'd say that it's my recollection that the timeline presented in that story was inaccurate now. And the story was wrong because you didn't know that that interview with the coroner was edited, right? Correct. Okay. You were just, like you said a second ago, too much of a, too, in too much of a hurry to get that on the air, to do that, right? No, it wasn't a hurry. It was just a new story was brought to me, and I covered it. And in the process, hurt real people. You understand that now, right? I'm sorry if that hurt anybody, and it's hard for me to accept that as we're continuing to talk about it, for me to say, understand this hurts someone, but yet we just keep talking about it, so we're just going to keep hurting people. You think they shouldn't exercise their rights to the court system, because that might hurt them just let you off. That's what you think? No, you said that. Early on, I asked you the question, it is not right to edit a clip to fit an agenda. You agree, right? Yes. You know that clip was edited to fit an agenda, right? Not at the time. I didn't ask you about it at the time. Today, I still don't know that. You don't? Okay. You've never seen the full transcript? No. Okay. Do you, Mr. Shoyer, understand that what she was saying about seeing her child was in the funeral home? That the McDonald family, what they did is they brought Grace's things that she loved, seashells. Um, they brought sunglasses. They brought a Taylor Swift album on Christmas. Christmas. She loved a frying pan because she loved to cook. And they were going to put it 
in the casket with grace. But they didn't because they didn't want to see her body like that. So they gave it to the funeral director to do. You understand that's what she's saying right there? I was unaware of that. That would be an important thing to know, right? Before you run a piece like that? Yes. Obviously she saw her child, right? I, I don't know. Obviously she was allowed. That's a bad question. Obviously she was allowed to see her child, right? I don't know. It is your position that you do not know, as a, as a general proposition, whether or not parents of murdered children are ever allowed to see the child's body. I'd have to make an assumption, but I mean, I would assume yes. Right. Why in the world would Neil Kessling owe you an explanation? He doesn't. Why in the world would Megan Kelp owe you an explanation? She doesn't. What about any of that was funny? As I explained earlier, if, Megan's, if Megan Kelly's goal was to stymie conspiracy theories about Sandy Hook being a hoax, it did the exact opposite of its effect. Now, I don't find Sandy Hook funny. I don't find the tragic loss of life funny at all. Do you think, do you think that prolonged and increased grief around a, a, a murdered child is funny? Because that's no. what happened, right? You understand, that's what happened. You prolonged and you compounded grief. You understand that? By covering an interview with Megan Kelly? By saying Neil Heslin never held Jesse after never he murdered at Sandy Hook Elementary School. I never That's said that. that. You think Scarlett and Neil deserve better than what you did that day? Yes. You would agree with me that to spread, whether it be the truth or a lie, you have to have a way to reach the audience, right? Okay, yes. A platform, if you would. Yes. Wolfgang Holland. Infowars was his voice. That was, you were his megaphone, right? No. He didn't have a TV show, right? You don't need a TV show to have a voice. I'm going to go through some other items too. So I'll ask that question again. He doesn't have a TV show, right? Not that I'm aware of. He doesn't have a radio show, right? Not that I'm aware of. He doesn't have some big internet presence, right? I don't know. He doesn't have any way to get his brand of crazy now other, through, other than through Infowars, right? That's who he used. Right? I don't know. You have no reason to be doing this to be going public. I mean, I would imagine you've lost a lot of business. And you tell that to my wife. I am about to kick out of my own house after being married 39 years. Alex, I'm about to lose my family because I'm simply asking the questions that you and your stations are looking at. And I'm asking you right now, I'm asking all you this, the thought on it, support InfoWars, become part of the Warriors. We need, uh, we need this show, we need the truth. Uh, if you find it in your heart to donate a few dollars to our legal funds, let me tell you, we have them. We have the lawsuits filed. We are closed, but we can't do it without people helping me. I'm too old for this, but I do need help. But big thing is support InfoWars, because if we don't have your voice, nobody's going to hear the truth. Well, folks, you can donate, and, and bring it as you're going to break. Tell us the specifics of where it was filed, what's going on with the lawsuit. Well, it's filed here in Seminole County because all my businesses, Children's Safety Institute, the National Institute, this is my home, this is where I live. And so instead of going to Connecticut where everything is crooked, we're going to come in the back door and therefore we file it. It's in the Seminole County court system. The judge, I mean the female judge, she saw what we're talking about and she did not hesitate issuing those 10 subpoenas across the country. And they've been served, and we're not just waiting for all of the responses. Wow, well, this is big national news. Did you hear Mr. Halbig say, if we don't have your voice, nobody is going to hear the truth? I don't remember everything he said, but I believe something along those lines was said yesterday. You, you trust me that that's close enough, right? And that's, that was the message you just said. Rather than play it again, I'll trust you. Fair enough. The your in your voice is Infowars or Alex Jones, right? Uh, or, or, or the audience, yeah. The audience. He addressed before that, he said, I he said something along the lines of, I need your listeners or I need all your listeners. So that could be viewed as we're all in this together. We need your voice, like you out there in the audience. Court Infowars. 
just in this right before it, right? Support InfoWars. We don't have your voice. Nobody's going to hear the truth, right? Yeah. Support InfoWars by giving money, right? Uh, yeah, and I think he mentioned that legal fund campaign, too. Yeah, so, because in addition to selling supplements, I mean, that's what he's saying support InfoWars. He's not saying go buy the supplements. He's saying just give you money, right? No. You have a donate button. Just donate money, right? We do have a donate button, yeah, but I don't think he mentioned that. I didn't hear that. Right. And and sometimes you have almost telethons where it's just, just, just giving money. If you want to hear the truth, if you want to hear the truth, just give us money. Give us some more money, right? Yeah, everybody does that. PBS, everybody does that. Is that does PBS sell brain force? What is it, brain force too? No, they just take our money. Yeah. Without the without the brain force two bills? I'm just, that's the pill, right? Uh, brain force plus is a pill. Yes. Brain force plus. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, PBS doesn't have to sell anything to get funding, they just get it for free. You know PBS is non profit, right? Non-profit? Yeah. Oh, okay. Did you not know that? Well, it might be a non-profit, but people are getting paid. Yeah, that's how non-profits work. Three words. Clinton Foundation. Mr. Shorey, I don't have more questions for you. All right, Mr. Reno. Mr. Shorey, um, please tell the members of the jury where you're from originally. I am originally from St. Louis, Missouri. And um, did you go to college? I did go to college. And what did you get your degree in? I studied psychology and media studies. What, um, how did you first get involved with broadcasting? In high school, when I wasn't starting on the varsity teams, I realized I was not going to be a professional <coughs> athlete. So I began writing for our school newspaper and doing reporting from our high school sporting events. While you were, after you graduated from high school, while you were in college, did you continue to work in broadcasting? I did. When I was at college, I was actually working professionally at multiple radio stations in St. Louis. And I was also the editor-in-chief of our student newspaper called The Current. And uh, what type of reporting were you doing at the time? For The Current, I was reporting on everything because we were very understaffed. So movies, concerts, sports, uh, just general activities on campus. And then professionally, I was in the sports media covering <coughs> local sports in St. Louis, college, professional. And um, did you, uh, did there come a time when you became interested in covering things beyond just sports? Yeah, I believe it was about 2013 when I wanted to pivot from sports to current events and politics. And if you recall, what was there an event, something that happened that, that made you want to switch from sports to current events and politics? There was. It was the Boston Marathon bombing. It was the first time in my life that I ever watched a news broadcast at all. I was not really watching television news, but I had the same fervor for being accurate talking on the radio back then. So I started to watch news reports on the Boston <coughs> Marathon bombing, and I started to follow up on some of those, do some digging. And what I realized was that we're not getting a full story from our government or our mainstream media. And it was kind of a shocking experience for me that really just changed my career path. How did you go about making the transition from, and let me back up, what was it about the coverage of the Boston Marathon bombing that so stuck out to you and, and made you want to look into it more? Well, for one, the FBI put up the Sonia Brothers mugshots, and they were looking for information on them. But they claimed at the time they didn't know who they were. And it later came out that the older Sonia brother was actually a government asset and had been flying back and forth from the United States to parts of the Middle East. So they knew well, they were well aware of who he was, and they didn't tell us that. And then when I saw the lockdown that they had, I don't know if lockdown is the right word, but basically they were going door to door looking for them. 
and then somehow he's in a boat covered in blood and they didn't find him. So I didn't really know what I was getting into at the time. I just had more interest in that in that moment than I did sports for the first time in my life. And how did you how did you go about making the transition from being a sports only radio person to being somebody who covered politics and current events. I was extremely embedded in the sports industry in St. Louis, so it really wasn't even a transition. I continued to work all the jobs that I had in sports, but I started doing some political stuff on the side, doing some YouTube live videos, starting to interject some political stuff on the radio shows. Um, so it was really just more of an add on top than it was a transition at the time. When you got a radio show that allowed you to talk about politics and current events, um, how old were you? I think I was 23 at the time, and really most of my political coverage at that time was on YouTube because anybody could start a YouTube account and fire up a live stream and have an audience. And from what time to what time did it broadcast? There was no uh, frequency of time. It was really just a matter of if I had a free hour or so. That was a poor question. When you finally got a radio show in St. Louis talking about politics and current events, what time was it aired? Nine to midnight. And. Um, were you paid to do that? No. How did you get the radio station to put you on from 9 to noon? Well, I won a civil suit against the radio station because they owed me thousands of dollars. And the GM at the time offered me a time slot on the radio in exchange for not me not being paid the funds. I knew I wasn't going to get paid. I wanted the airtime. So that was the deal that was made. All right, it's 5 o'clock. We're going to break for the day. For my jury, please remember and follow all of them. You may all be seated. To stay on the record. Mr. Schroyer, I'm going to ask you just a few questions. You testified just today that you um, were a guest or a co-host with Mr. Jones on Tuesday. Is that right? Yes. And you testified that you did a show and then a, a second show, is that right? Yes. And what were the topics of those two shows? I mean, were any of the topics of those two shows this, this uh, trial? Yes. Okay. Did you and Mr. Jones talk about anything that happened at the trial? I don't recall exactly what was discussed. Are they still available for viewing? I believe so. So you think you talked about the trial without talking about what happened at the trial? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, you just told me that the topic included this trial, didn't you? Yes. Okay. And I'm asking you, did you talk about what happened in this courtroom? And you said, I don't remember. Well, I just don't recall the exact details. Or the I'm not asking you for any details. Did you talk about things that happened in this courtroom? Probably, yes. Didn't Mr. Raynal inform you that you were under the rule? What rule? So is that a no? Did he have a conversation with you about being under the rule? Well, he did. He told me I am not to watch any other witness testimony. Did he not tell you he, you weren't to speak with any other witness? Um, I don't believe so. Did he not tell you you weren't supposed to discuss anything that happened in this courtroom during the trial? No. Any further questions on this topic only? Any other questions on this topic? And be careful. Yeah. Mr. Schroeder, um, during your conversation on Tuesday, what time was that that you were on the air with Mr. Jones? I believe Mr. Jones got in to the office that day at about 2 o'clock. 2 p.m.? I believe so. And what time were you on the field? 6 p.m. And did you discuss any of the witness testimony from the day or hear anything about um, any of the evidence that was presented 
in the case? No, I don't believe so. Have you had any other show appearances this week with Mr. Jones? I posted on Monday and Tuesday, and I believe that's it. So you weren't on the show yesterday? No. Okay. Were you on the show today? No. All right. And these are all available online, right? Yes. All right. You may step down. You'll have to, uh, actually, I'm going to read something to you first. To anyone who is listed as a potential witness, that includes you, you're currently a witness, you have been placed under the rule, which means, this doesn't apply to parties or experts, but it does apply to you, that it will be necessary for you to remain outside the courtroom while other witnesses are testifying. You are not to talk with each other or with any other person, including the parties, about the case except by permission of the court. You may, however, discuss your testimony with the attorneys in the case. You are not to read any report of or comment upon the testimony in the case while under the rule. Any witness or other person violating these instructions may be punished for contempt of court, and it may result in my striking the witness's testimony. Thank you. You may step down. Mr. Raynal, on Tuesday, when you invoked the rule in this case, I also, in addition to reading what I just read, read the following portion. Counsel, inform your other witnesses that the rule has been invoked and the effect of the rule. Did you hear me say that on Tuesday? I did, Your Honor. Did you follow my instructions? Clearly not the way Your Honor intended. I can assure Your Honor that they did not discuss anybody's testimony. It will be easy to find out if they discussed the case, won't it? Certainly, Your Honor. I misunderstood based on, on my experience and my practice. Because um, you're just a brand new lawyer, right? Enough with the aw shucks. I don't know the rules of court. I understand that. Now, I want to make it clear. Anyone who might be a witness needs to be informed tonight about the rule, that it has been invoked, and what it means, which is that they will not speak to any other person except one of the lawyers, not a party, lawyer, about anything having to do with this case and this trial. Do you understand, Mr. Raynal? Crystal. Thank you. Do we need to do anything else on the record today? Nothing to Mr. Raynal? No, Your Honor. We may go off the record. You're not excused yet. So can you imagine how pissed off she's going to be when she sees this? It's going to be hilarious, man. We'll pick it back up at day four very soon. But I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. Thank you. Thanks for watching.